So we've been speaking about pranayam, pranayam um, as a means to arrive at a state of yoga. And as we know that the state of yoga implies nirodha or restraint. Um, as Patanjali says in the beginning of the Yoga Sutras, yoga chitta vritti nirodha, that it is the nirodha or the restraint of the vrittis or the chitta vritti or the compulsive loopings of the mind. So this is what Patanjali proposes, that yoga is the restraint of the movement or the compulsive looping of the mind. About a millennium later, Swatmaraman in the Hatha Yoga Pradipika offers us techniques and methods um, of how to arrive at this condition of yoga. And he is proposing um, pranayam. So in the second chapter uh, of the Hatha Pratipika, the second karika, he says, Chale, baat, chale baate, chale chittam, nischale nischalam bhavet. Yogi sthanutva maknoti tato vayum nirodhayet. Tato vayum nirodhayet. And this is a very, very important karika and many of us know this, which implies that as the breath moves, so the mind moves. Because anything that moves is moved by the element air. Chale vate, chale chittam. As the air moves, in tandem, mirroring that, the mind moves. Nis chale, nis chalam bhavet. When that movement stills or becomes, um, it stops moving, it results in nischalam bhavet, the condition of nischalam, of unmovement, of stillness is obtained. And then he goes in the next line to say, yogi sthanutva mapnoti. Sthanutva mapnoti, sthanu is a trunk, a trunk of a tree or a stump. So the yogi obtains a state, an, an already existing state, a pre-existing state that's already available to me in the body, of that of stumpness, of trunkness, of like that, that it, he or she arrives at that, that firmness that is part and parcel of my being already. I, it's obtained. So it's not only that he becomes a, a trunk, and this is a very, very beautiful part, and it, it is actually poetic. That it's not that I become the trunk. I obtain the trunkness of the of my being. I obtain mapnoti. I arrive at. I obtain the pre-existent trunkness. So I go into a state of trunkness, of being completely sthira. Yeah. When tato vayum the air nirodhaye. By the restraint of vayu or by the restraint of breath, I arrive at a state of yoga. Now, the, the question which I open and which is also part and parcel of my practice is whether, what, what, what brings me to this state? Is it like a conscious uh, restraining or tempering of the breath like we... No, that you know, we, we, we'll temper the breath, we'll just work on, we'll keep working on the breath as a technique, we'll keep doing, so to speak, perfecting the technique, or does it also mean and warrant that I equally become available to this pre-existent call of the trunkness of my being, which already exists. And I, I propose again and again that it is not only the doing of the technique, but it's also becoming available. And when I say becoming available, I mean intrinsically, um, um, poetically available, because this is, a, this is a poetic state of becoming available to the trunkness, to the, to the, to the, to the pre-existent, to the memory of the trunkness that is there. Um, of, that means I am already a stable being and I become available to it. And to arrive at it, I also do techniques of pranayama. So for me, what I'm proposing is that yoga is not only a practice of doing, yoga is intrinsically becoming available to the existent poetry of our bodies.